Welcome to the Brian Harden blog. Today is the 3rd of October, and it's my pleasure to have a really good friend of mine uh, here today. He's an author, he's a speaker, he has been in teen and crisis ministry for a long time. He does a lot of things, but he has a new book coming out, and his name is Bill Scott, and the book is called The Day Satan Called. And I guess uh, this being the Halloween season, this is a good time for a book like this to come out when all kinds of chillers and thrillers are hitting the Hollywood scene and the book scene. But this is a real true-to-life chiller. And um, man, how did this happen, Bill? Yeah, it is a a true-to-life kind of story. And if I were probably in your, your shoes, I'd be going... All right. As I begin to read, I'd be going, really? Could this happen? I'm just telling you it did. I'm the most unlikely person for this to happen to. Because, I mean, I grew up independent Bible Baptist. Loved it. It was a great growing up. But we didn't focus on spiritual warfare of any any kind, okay? So I really am the most unlikely person uh, for this to happen to. But I was working at a radio station, and as the request line rang, you know, people usually wanted to hear whatever was popular in the day. And this little girl just began to whisper, I'm going to be sacrificed on Halloween. It was about a week before. Mm. I'd never heard that before. And I was blown away. I, I'm not so sure that I believed it, but I could tell there was an intensity in her voice where she needed help. Yeah. So I said, well, we'll get you into a safe house. We care. We're going to do something for you. And it was at that moment, it's almost like she gagged on something. And there was this most unhuman, I don't know how else to describe it, but unhuman voice. And I knew from a boy that didn't know anything about the demonic realm, I knew it was a demon. And a friend standing next to me did. And he said, well, how do you know it's a demon if indeed you've never heard every hair on your head? stands on end you just know that this is you've encountered evil itself and so for three days brian we took phone calls from this girl on and off uh the phone just trying to save her Mm, man and so you're probably just rewiring the way you think about the spiritual world during these days just having to really reconsider what it is you believe Well, yeah, because, you know, at first I thought, well, of course, there's a Satan, which, you know, interesting fact, 40 percent of the church, even today, those in it don't believe there's Satan, that that he's real. Um, I knew he was real, but I didn't know that you could have these kind of encounters. And uh, it was early on. I didn't know what to do. And I, you know, I tried to bind Satan over the phone. I'd say, I command you to leave in Jesus name. And and the response was, F you, I'm not leaving. Okay, now that wasn't the response I was looking for. Sure, right. And I'm thinking, I looked at my friend, I said, that is all I know to do. And I didn't realize Satan was testing me to see if I knew my authority in Christ and who I was. And and I didn't know. And so therefore, he took the lead and he won in many of those different conversations. I, I knew I was really over my head when we had a lady in the uh, church and, and at the radio station. Her name was Susan. She'd been involved in the occult for years mm-hmm. and now had been out for years as a born-again Christian. She asked, could I come and pray with Lacey over the telephone? I said, come on, join us. We had her on a speakerphone. And I'm praying and I'm talking and this thing's talking back and Lacey's talking. Susan enters the room. Nobody announces her at all. She just walks like you would into a prayer meeting that was in progress. Right. It gets quiet. And all of a sudden, this unhuman voice simply says, just real quietly, Susan, where you been? We've missed you. Huh. Brian, I'm just telling you, I knew we were in trouble. And she ran out and she later came back after getting prayed up and realizing Satan that was giving her a hard time. But... I knew that we were in trouble, and I didn't know what to do. I didn't know who to call. It was a group of us that just believed that we could win this. Long story short, we did end up meeting this uh, Lacey, and it was unbelievable. I mean, we can't go into it now, but it was just beyond your imagination and my imagination what could have possibly happened. And with all that, I took her home. Mm. She said, if I go back, they could kill me. They could hurt me because now I've decided to follow Christ. And I said, well, come home with me. It was like opening Pandora's box in my home. You know, things going bump in the night, door slamming, lights on and off. Now, you're talking to a guy here. 
I didn't even know this was real three days ago. Yeah. Not in this form, right? Right. right. It was like a cheap horror flick. All I knew is I had something inside of me that said, you can win, you can win, figure it out, get in the word, pray, ask people. It was just, it was amazing. Then we got her into a, a safe house after that, after about two weeks, but we still had to deal with a house that was haunted for about another three weeks after that. Wow. Okay. So I've been reading the book over the weekend, and it's riveting, and yeah. it's chilling. And you know, I mean, with a story like this, when somebody comes out and starts talking like this, it's the stuff of the movies. It's the stuff we go see but don't really believe happens. Why now? I mean, why come out and put yourself sort of in that kind of exposure mm. where, you know, people can go, well, I think Bill, he's just, <laughs> I think he fell off the side of a cliff somewhere. Well, yeah, I mean, it's been 21 years. And, and I've had a couple of people say, why 21 years? I never planned on writing a book, had no desire to write a book. When we first ended this, uh, after an 18-month uh, journey, I didn't want anything to do with it. I wanted my life back. I didn't want any demonic activity. I mean, during this time, I had witches and warlocks and death threats and people show up uh, threatening to, to do harm to my family. I mean, there was a lot going on. So I just thought, you know, for the safety and just to get my life back, I'm going to forget this happened and move on. And over the years, I've shared the story some, uh, only once in public, and that was this last summer. But my wife two years ago said, I think you need to write write a book. And so I wrote it, and she said, if anything, just get your thoughts out on paper after all these years. Yeah. And so I did, and it was pretty pretty chilling when I'm writing all this stuff. And I said, when we got it done, it's going to sit on my desk. I'm not so sure, because I, I really think this, the, the stories are that intense. I didn't know they needed to be shared. Yeah. And so I said, I'm going to put it on my desk. If God wants it published, the publisher is going to come to us. Mm -hmm. And after about four or five months, a friend called, said, I know you got that book on your desk. I said, yeah. He said, I know a friend who knows a friend that really wants to have coffee with you. And I thought, okay, well, God opened that door. Mm -hmm. And long story short, he took the book to a publisher. The first publisher immediately said, we want to get the story out. We believe in it. So, you know, I, people may think I'm crazy, some. And some of you are going to go, wow. Okay, maybe I'm not crazy, meaning yourself, because you've had things go bump in the night. Yeah. And it's something that we can actually talk about, because it is a hush-hush kind of a topic we don't seem to talk about this often in our churches so um hopefully uh, you'll feel like wow okay i can share my story too yeah and i think that's fantastic the book is the day satan called what is the release date for the book bill it's coming out on tuesday the 11th yes. uh, of october and i mean it'll be everywhere barnes and noble and amazon and uh, i just saw it just as we got on, iTunes has it for iBooks and the Kindle and, you know, everything. The Nook, yeah. It's, it's going to be everywhere. And, I, you know, I, I did release it in October because of Halloween. Yeah. I, I sort of want people to pick it up. It's got a rather intense cover. Mm -hmm. I want people to pick it up thinking, oh, here's another great spook kind of a deal. And then when they get in, they realize this isn't bragging on Satan. This is bragging on God's ultimate power in our life. So, you know, Barnes & Noble signed up to make it a huge promotion in October. Yeah. And I'm, I'm certain because it's a scary story. Sure. But let me tell you, it brings the power of Christ and the freedom that he has for all of us. So, yes, it's a scary story through a lot of the book, but it ends very well. And I, I'm pretty excited about it. If people want to check out a free chapter, they can at BillScottLive.com. I mean, just sign up for a free chapter and you can see if it's something you like or not yeah and i do recommend it i've uh, i guess i'm about halfway through it now and i was telling you offline i always you know read to get sleepy and then i'll set my book or my ipad down <clears throat> and uh with this one i i'm waking up in the morning with it on my chest i mm. just was was sunk into the book so deeply so i'm excited for people to uh, have the opportunity to read this. We're also going to have Bill at Vox at the Wind Farm Cafe on Friday, the 14th of October. So mm -hmm. you can hear more of the story there by either coming <laughs> to Nashville and seeing him in person or uh, online through the Daily Audio Bible app 
or at www.justin.tv forward slash wind farm cafe and bill will be sharing and taking your questions then so it's awesome to have you bill i'm really looking well thank forward you to, uh, to vox and i'm really looking forward to uh getting feedback from people who have have read the book what i think is gonna happen uh-huh is that yeah it, maybe it's compelling enough to read because it's a chilling story but I think that there are a lot more people that have had spiritual experiences that haven't really known where to compartmentalize them. Yeah, I think you're right. Sort of, you set it aside and go, that's just one of those things in my life I can't explain. Mm. And um, so I, th- I think that this is going to bring those people forward to go, okay, I haven't been able to explain this time when such and such happened. But right. now it's starting to make some sense to me. Yeah, I, I think you're right. I'd love to hear your stories, and uh, you know, I'd love to have a chance to pray for you. If you, you know, you post something, I'll post right back. I'm praying for you. I mean, I really believe that God can have unbelievable victory in your life, and hopefully, the book sets it out there. This is okay to talk about. Right. I mean, the Bible talks about it, right? Sure. So we should sure. be able to talk about it as well and get to know who our enemy is, so we can win. Right. Thanks, Bill. It's uh, an honor to have you. Thank you, man. Good to be with you.